Hi, uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a uh, custom attachment for an uh, application uh, where we have uh, integrated our uh, StreamChat uh, SDK. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, StreamChat SDK, I uh, highly suggest you to watch my uh, three video tutorial series where I have explained uh, how to basically implement uh, chat functionality in your application using this amazing uh, StreamChat uh, SDK. And uh, in the preview of this uh, video, you have uh, seen how our custom uh, attachment uh, will actually look like. So now uh, let's get started. So uh, the first thing uh, which we're going to do here, uh, I'm going to add a new icon uh, inside our chat fragment and that icon uh, will be located here on the top right corner. So later whenever we click on that uh, icon, we will uh, trigger our alert dialog where uh, our user will be able to choose uh, date and time and uh, send a custom attachment to this chat. So uh, the first thing uh, which I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to hide this uh, avatar in our fragment chat. So here inside our layout, inside the message list header view, I'm going to add one attribute called the stream UI message list header show user avatar and I'm going to set its value to false. So now that avatar will not be visible and here we want to add our own icon. So now let me just open up our drawable directory and here I'm going to add a new vector asset. So let's choose here this icon, so uh, baseline event node. All right, click next and finish. And now let's uh, add that uh, icon here using uh, image view. All right, so let's select uh, this one. And now I have connected uh, those constraints to top and the right. And let's uh, just uh, use the code here and I'm going to move this uh, image uh, down below. So, so right there, okay, now I'm going to move that image view here. And the top margin and the end margin should be 16 dp instead. So let's just replace those values. All right. And now it looks uh, even better. So let's just rename this to something different. So uh, shift plus F6 and let's rename this to appointment button. Because whenever we uh, click on this uh, image view, we're going to open up an alert dialog where user can uh, select date and time. And uh, after that, we're going to just uh, create a custom uh, appointment uh, attachment in our chat. So now let's run our app and let's see if uh, everything will look like uh, as expected. Okay, so here I'm going to just uh, log in with uh, my existing uh, account here. And of course, uh, if you haven't watched my uh, tutorial series about uh, Stream Chat SDK, then uh, be sure to watch that before you continue watching this video. Okay. So now here, as you can see, I have one channel and when I open up that channel, so here uh, that avatar is now not visible and instead we have added this uh, image view. So for now it looks uh, just fine. And the next thing here, I want to create a custom uh, layout file where uh, we're going to design our custom attachment. So let's here uh, create a new layout file. I'm going to name that uh, custom underscore attachment. All right, so click OK. So now I'm going to design this uh, custom attachment and then I'm going to explain. Okay, uh, so this is how our uh, custom attachment uh, layout uh, will look like. So basically we're going to have a one material card view and inside we're going to have a constraint layout and inside that constraint layout we're going to have a one image view and uh, two text views. So basically this uh, image view will represent this uh, icon which we have uh, already added in our drawable directory. Then here the first uh, text will represent a date and the second one will represent a time. Okay, uh, so now that we have created our uh, custom attachment uh, layout, now I'm going to create a custom alert dialog layout because uh, whenever we click on this uh, little image view button here, then uh, we should open up a custom alert uh, dialog here and inside that uh, alert dialog, our user should be able to select uh, date and time and uh, after that uh, send those uh, information to our chat here where uh, those information will basically be converted into our uh, custom uh, attachment uh, which we have already created here. So now let me create here another uh, custom layout file. I'm going to name this uh, file uh, custom alert dialog 
all right so click ok and uh, again i'm going to just create here the ui and then i'm going to explain okay so now i have created the custom alert uh, dialog so now you can see that here we have a date picker we have a time picker we have a next button and we have a back button so by default our back button and the time picker will uh, have its visibility values to invisible and uh, we're going to change its visibility values uh, later in the code so for now the default values will stay like that and here we can just uh, set its visibility to visible for now so you can just uh, check that out and see how our time picker will look like okay so there you go this is how our time picker will look like and now let's uh, switch this visibility to invisible like before and this is how our back button looks like so it has a different style uh, from our next button okay so let's just uh, set back its visibility to invisible and uh, we're going to use this uh, custom alert uh, dialog uh, from our code okay uh, so now let's open up our chat uh, fragment okay so right here and the first thing i'm going to create here a new variable named uh, client and here let's call a chat uh, client dot uh, instance and uh, inside our own create uh, view function i'm going to just uh, add uh, one more click listener so binding dot uh, appointment button and that's our uh, appointment button uh, from the top right corner of our uh, chat fragment and let's uh, here set uh, on click listener all right and here i'm going to call one function named uh, show uh, dialog and we're going to create this function so basically inside our new show dialog function we need to implement the logic for our custom alert dialog so first uh, let's start by creating a new variable i'm going to name this variable dialog and here i'm going to call a dialog and i'm going to pass here require activity all right so down below i'm going to call this dialog and i'm going to call its function a set uh, content view and inside this view i'm going to pass the layout which we have already created so let's just import this uh, r all right alt plus enter and here let's just call a custom alert uh, dialog perfect uh, next uh, down below i need to get a reference of uh, all those views from our custom alert dialog layout file and here we have uh, four different views so date and time picker and uh, two buttons so first let's create here a new variable called the uh, date and here i'm going to call a find view by id on our dialog so let's just uh, pass here r dot uh, id dot uh, date picker and i'm going to cast that as a date picker all right i'm going to just copy this a uh, few more times and here i'm going to replace to time i'm going to search here for a time picker and convert that to a time picker as well now here i'm going to just call a next uh, button let's here search for that same id and let's convert that to a uh, button and here a uh, back button as well perfect let's just copy that here and uh, cast that as a button as well perfect so down below i'm going to add the uh, on click listener for our next button but also create a new variable named uh, clicked and its default value will be false so now let's call next button and let's uh, set uh, on a click listener so basically whenever we uh, click our next button from here then we want to change a few things so we want to make our time picker uh, visible again our date picker should be invisible our back button should become visible and our next button text uh, should be changed to submit so here i'm going to add the one if block and check if clicked is false which is uh, its default value so basically whenever we click on our uh, next button for the first time then we want to call our time and set its visibility to uh, invisible so view dot uh, or sorry visible down below i'm going to call a date and set its uh, visibility value to uh, invisible this time then a back button should become visible so view dot uh, visible and our next uh, button text uh, should be changed to uh, submit now all right perfect and in else case if this uh, clicked value is actually true which will mean basically that we have clicked our button and of course at the end of this sound click listener i also want to set this uh, clicked uh, value to its opposite value so let's just rename this to var so we can change its value okay and now whenever this clicked is actually true then i'm going to create here a calendar instance and basically inside that uh, calendar i want to put uh, all those uh, values from our date and time picker which our user have already chose and uh, i want to format those uh, date and time values in order to pass them as uh, attachment to our uh, stream chat uh, sdk or our new class uh, which we're going to create a little bit later so 
so you will see. So here I'm going to just uh, add some code and then I'm going to explain. Okay, so here in this uh, else block, you can see that uh, at the end of this block, I'm basically dismissing this uh, alert dialog, which means that whenever we press our next button, when its text is actually called submit, then we want to basically dismiss our alert dialog. And I want to format uh, those values which we have uh, received from a date and time picker into uh, this format. And also I want to store the result of that into this variable called appointment. And then I want to pass this uh, variable to one new function which we're going to create right here. And let's create a function named set or send message. And here I'm going to just uh, pass that result. So whenever a user selects uh, date and time from our alert dialog, we want to basically send our message along with uh, our custom attachment. So now let's create here a new function, send message. Okay, perfect. And uh, here also now I'm going to add some code and then I'm going to explain. Okay, uh, so this is how our send message function uh, will actually look like. So basically with this function, uh, we want to send our message along with this appointment, uh, which we have passed from our previous function called the show dialog. Okay, so here as you can see, we are setting uh, the attachment type to this uh, appointment string, which is a custom string uh, which I uh, created right now. And down below, I'm also passing the extra data and uh, that uh, extra data should be received from these uh, parameters of this function, all right? And then this attachment from our stream chat SDK is used to create a message object. And uh, down below, as you can see, I have created uh, one more variable named the channel ID. And if you have watched my previous tutorial series, then uh, you know that we're using a uh, safe args to pass uh, one value from our channels fragment to our uh, chat fragment. But that value which is passed between uh, fragments is not the actual channel ID value which we need to pass inside this uh, send message function. And that's why basically I'm splitting that uh, string using this uh, delimiter. And that uh, string uh, will be split in two parts and I'm getting that uh, last part, okay? And uh, that the second half of this uh, channel ID value is the actual channel ID of our chat. And of course, uh, after that, I'm calling this uh, send message function. Here I'm passing the channel type, which is a messaging channel ID and also that message which we have created. So now we have basically completed our chat fragment and now basically we need to create just one more class which should handle those attachments from our messages. And if that new class receives this appointment attachment, then and only then we want to basically add our custom attachment to our chat. So now I'm going to create here a new class. I'm going to name this uh, class uh, custom attachment uh, view factory. Okay, so before I continue with this class, there is just uh, one more thing which I have forgot to add in our chat fragment. So here, as you can see, I have uh, already added the next button click listener, but uh, I have forgot to add the back button on click listener. So let's add here a new click listener. So basically when I click a back button, I just want to set back its visibility values and our next uh, button text as well. So our time picker should be set back to its invisible value. Then uh, our date uh, picker should be set to uh, its visible value. Then uh, our back button should be also invisible as before. And the text of our next button should be set back to next. And of course, whenever we click a back button, we want to change our clicked uh, value to its uh, opposite value. All right, perfect. And now let's open up our custom attachment uh, view factory class. And uh, here I'm going to just uh, add some code and then I'm going to explain. Okay, uh, so now here uh, I have uh, added some code and now I'm going to explain. So our uh, custom attachment view factory class is extending this uh, attachment uh, view factory, which is a part of our uh, stream chat SDK. And basically inside our class, we have uh, overridden this uh, create attachment view function from this uh, attachment uh, view factory class. All right. And basically here we are getting that uh, attachment which we have already sent from our uh, chat fragment. And we are searching that attachment by its uh, key, which is appointment. And as you can see in our chat fragment here, we have set the type of that attachment to be appointment. And that's the same type uh, which we are checking here. Okay, so we are getting that uh, attachment and this is actually a nullable type. So if this attachment uh, type uh, appointment is not null, we are basically getting that data from that uh, attachment which we have sent from our chat fragment. And we are using that uh, string uh, which contains uh, year, month, day, hour and minute to actually format that date into a this format. And uh, after we properly uh, format that uh, date, 
we are setting that date to our calendar okay and that calendar is passed to this uh, create appointment uh, view function down below okay and inside this function we are basically inflating our custom attachment uh, layout which we have created so right here and from there we are just uh, getting the reference of uh, those all views from that uh, custom attachment layout and we are setting its values using this calendar and that calendar is basically used to extract uh, that data so here we have two variables date format and time format okay and we have properly formatted those uh, values uh, in those variables and then we are setting those uh, values to our views and of course there is one more thing here which we need to do and we need to implement uh, on click listener so for example whenever we click on our uh, custom attachment we can just open up a calendar or uh, create some event so you will see about that and let's just uh, get back to our chat fragment and here inside on create view i'm going to just call a binding dot uh, message uh, list and here I want to set uh, attachment uh, view factory and here let's pass our uh, custom attachment uh, view factory. Okay, so now uh, let's run our application and let's see if uh, everything is going to work just as expected. Okay, so let me just uh, log in with those uh, same credentials uh, as before. Now let's uh, log in here. Let's open up uh, this chat. Let's now click this button. Okay, so when we click this button, uh, nothing happens and uh, I have forgot to add here uh, one line of code inside our show dialog function. So just below our back button click listener, we need to call a dialog and then we want to show that. Okay, so we have forgot to do that. And now let's run our app again. So now our alert dialog uh, should show. So let's uh, see. Okay, so let's just uh, log in here with the same credentials as before. Let's open up this uh, first chat. Let's uh, click this button. And now, as you can see, we can see our uh, custom alert uh, dialog. And let's choose, for example, let's say maybe uh, July uh, 30. Let's click Next. And now, as you can see, our time picker is shown and our back button as well. So we can, of course, go back and change some values for the time. Or we can just select here the time, for example, 540. And let's uh, click Submit. So now, there you go. So now we have displayed successfully that uh, custom attachment and uh, it's displaying those exact values uh, which we have selected. So now the last thing which we need to do here, uh, we need to create an on-click listener for this uh, custom attachment. So whenever we click on this uh, attachment, we can open up a calendar application and for example, create an event. So let's go to custom attachment view factory and here let's create a new function. So I'm going to name this uh, function create uh, event. And here I'm going to pass uh, two parameters, so a parent and a calendar. And uh, now I'm going to create a new function down below, so private fun, create event. And the uh, first thing I'm going to create here a new variable called uh, start uh, time. And here I'm going to get the time from our calendar in milliseconds, okay. Then down below I'm going to create intent, so action uh, insert, all right. And let's apply here a few things. So first let's specify the type and I'm going to just uh, paste this uh, type so you can find this uh, in my uh, GitHub repository so the source code uh, will be available for you to download in the video description so don't worry. So uh, now I'm going to also add a few more things and then I'm going to explain. Okay, uh, so as you can see inside this uh, function I'm basically creating uh, one intent and uh, I'm specifying a few values which I want to pass in that uh, calendar uh, application when creating that event. So here I have just uh, specified an empty values just to show you that you can also add a few more uh, things for that event like a title, description, event location. You can also add uh, extra event uh, and time as well. But for now I have just uh, put that to a start time. And of course we are launching that intent by calling a start activity function. So now let's run our app once again and uh, let's see how this will actually work. Let's here select another date. For example, 26, uh, 645, let's say. All right, click Submit. Perfect. And now click on this uh, custom attachment. All right. So there you go. So now we have opened up our calendar application. And uh, here we have passed those exact values for our start time. So as you can see, Monday, July 26th, 645. So those were the exact values which we have passed with this uh, start time variable. And of course, you can specify a few more information down below, like a location and so on. 
And uh, now basically I have shown you how to create a custom attachment by yourself using a stream chat uh, SDK. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Like this video if you find it helpful of course. And uh, see you in the next one.